in 2016, the world was stunned when billionaire, businessman, and TV personality Donald Trump was elected as the 45th President of the United States. Even with his brash personality, radical policies, and questionable history, few could have predicted the dramatic twists and turns which would come to plague his time in office. In this video, we'll be taking a deep dive into Trump's past, how he rose to power, the numerous scandals he was involved in, and his legacy for the future. As with all our videos in this series, we'll break it down into three unique sections, like Neapolitan ice cream, the vanilla, the who, what, where, and one of the folks that changed the world, chocolate, that flavor punch. Controversy and adversity make lives so interesting, and the strawberry the lasting legacy and lick that all Neapolitan lives come with. If you're interested in other videos like this, or different in-depth looks at essential people throughout history, then make sure you're subscribed to the channel with post notifications on, so you never miss a single one. Without further ado, let's get into it. Vanilla Donald John Trump came into the world on June 14, 1946. He was the fourth of five children born to Fred and Mary Ann McLeod Trump, who were second and first generation immigrants from Germany and Scotland, respectively. Fred Trump was a prominent real estate developer and raised his family in the borough of Queens in New York City. Donald attended the private Coo Forest School from kindergarten through to seventh grade, and then at age 13, he enrolled at the New York Military Academy. At 18, Donald went to Fordham University before transferring two years later to the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania, where he graduated in 1968 with a bachelor's degree in economics. Interesting to note is that we know very little about Trump's grades. That's because in 2015, his lawyer, Michael Cohen, threatened Trump's former colleagues in high schools with legal action if they released Trump's academic records. This would not be the last time that Trump would attempt to keep records hidden. During his college years, Trump managed to avoid being drafted for the Vietnam War by obtaining four student draft deferments. When he was deemed fit for service in 1966 and eligible to serve, he was then granted a conditional medical deferment just two years later, and in 1972, he was permanently disqualified from service due to bone spurs. In 1977, Trump married a Czech model named Ivana Zelnichkova, and in the same year she gave birth to the couple's first son, Donald Jr. They would go on to have two more children together, Ivanka, born in 1981, and Eric, born in 1984, before divorcing in 1992 following Trump's affair with actress Marla Maples. Trump then married Maples in 1993 and the pair had one child together, a daughter named Tiffany, who was born that same year, before the couple divorced six years later in 1999. Donald then married his current wife, Melania, in 2005, and they too have a son together named Barron, who was born in 2006. Donald Trump has often claimed that he started his business career with a small loan of $1 million from his father. This statement has been ridiculed by many, not only because to most people $1 million is far from small, but also because there is evidence that Trump received loans from his father's company that number in the hundreds of millions of dollars throughout his career. Donald joined his father's real estate company in 1968, became president of the company in 1971, and soon began his own business ventures under the Trump Organization umbrella. They involved several real estate projects in Manhattan, acquisition of the Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach, Florida, and the construction of casinos in Atlantic City. It was arguably the casino business that gave Trump his biggest financial headache. When the $1.1 billion Trump Taj Mahal went bankrupt in 1989, leaving Trump with $900 million of personal debt, as a result, he had to sell his Trump Shuttle airline, his mega yacht, and several other businesses to stay afloat. Side ventures involved investing in sports teams and entertainment. Between 1996 and 2015, Trump was owner of the Miss Universe pageants, including Miss USA and Miss Teen USA. Surprisingly, it was his work as a producer of these pageants that Trump was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2007. The creation of Trump University a place offering training courses in real estate for a fee of between $1,500 and $35,000 did not end well for Trump. In 2013, 
a $40 million civil suit was filed against the university, with employees testifying the Trump University had lied to and defrauded its students. Trump would later pay $25 million in settlements. Likewise, the Donald J. Trump Foundation, a charity established in 1988, came under fire for allegedly breaching both legal and ethical violations, including self-dealing and tax evasion. Another civil suit was filed, and in 2019, Trump was ordered to pay $2 million to various charities for misusing funds, partly to finance his presidential campaign. Speaking of which, Trump started to get involved in politics around 1987. The same year he took out full-page advertisements in three national newspapers, spouting his views regarding foreign policy and the federal budget deficit. Though he expressed a desire to run for president as early as 1988, it was not until 2016 that he actually ran a serious campaign. By this time, Trump's fame had skyrocketed, largely due to his media career which involved book writing, cameos in popular films and on TV, but most notably his roles as host and producer of the hit reality TV show, The Apprentice. Trump's unprecedented media coverage, in addition to his provocative statements and use of truthful hyperbole, as he put it, won him many supporters, particularly in the Midwest states, among white working-class voters. Though not taken seriously at first, the celebrity business mogul became the Republican nominee for the presidency in May 2016, following a key win in the state of Indiana. Then he shocked everyone even further by winning the presidential election despite opinion polls consistently favoring his opponent, Hillary Clinton. Although Clinton had won the popularity vote by a margin of almost 2.9 million, Trump received 304 electoral votes and won in 30 states, compared to the 227 electoral votes received for Clinton, who won in 20 states. It was not the first time that a candidate had lost the popular vote and still become president of the United States. It was actually the fifth time. Nor was it the first time an on-screen celebrity had been voted into the White House. Ronald Reagan was an actor who had starred in movies before taking office. However, Trump was the first American president not to have served in the military or to have held any government office prior to becoming president, though that fact was towards the bottom of a long list of concerns held by Trump's critics. Chocolate To say that Donald Trump's presidency was controversial is a huge understatement. From the very start, he faced heavy backlash over an election campaign that appeared to promote far-right ideals, zeroing in on hot topics such as immigration and promising to build a wall along the country's border with Mexico, while also refusing to condemn known white supremacist groups. There were various allegations of sexual misconduct directed towards Trump, too. In October 2016, an audio recording surfaced in which Trump could be heard saying, When you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything grab him by the pussy. The audio clip from 2005 caused outrage and led to a rare public apology from Trump. No fewer than 26 women, including Trump's first wife, accused the leader of committing various sexual crimes including rape and kissing and groping without consent, among other sexual acts. Trump denied all allegations in 2016 saying they were false smears and part of a conspiracy against him. Still, on the day of his inauguration, half a million people protested in Washington, D.C., and an estimated 2.6 million people took part in women's marches around the world. This high turnout of protesters was seemingly in stark contrast to the lack of supporters who turned out for Trump's inauguration. Photos appear to suggest that far fewer people had turned out in support of Trump than had attended Obama's swearing-in ceremony. However, when this was brought up to Trump's staff by journalists, the president's press secretary, Sean Spicer, claimed that Mr. Trump had the largest audience to ever witness an inauguration, period, and proceeded to give figures that seemed unlikely. The situation gave rise to one of Trump's famous phrases, fake news. During his election campaign and his time in office, Trump constantly butted heads with the media and seemed to use them to spread catchphrases like crooked Hillary, spygate, and fake news which his supporters could latch onto and repeat. The president was also a frequent user of Twitter, which worked both for and against him, as we will see. In June 2017, a White House press secretary announced that Trump's tweets were to be taken as official presidential statements. When suspicions arose of Russian tampering in the election, 
Trump was quick to dismiss it as fake news. But an investigation led by Robert Mueller found that Russia did indeed interfere in the election to Trump's benefit, although there was no evidence to say that Trump had conspired with the Russians. Trump's taxes were also a point of contention when he refused to release his tax returns despite making promises in 2014 and 2015 that he would do so if he ran for office. Trump revealed that his tax returns were being audited and stated that his lawyers had advised him against releasing them. By going back on his word, though, he became the first candidate since 1976 not to release these records. Eventually, following a long criminal investigation and two appeals by Trump to the United States Supreme Court, in February 2021, the judge released the records to a prosecutor for review by a grand jury. Going back to the start of Donald Trump's presidency, just nine days after taking office, there were further protests in response to Trump's travel ban. Dubbed the Muslim ban by critics, Executive Order 13769, titled Protecting the Nation from Foreign Terrorist Entry into the United States, was an order signed by Trump that effectively banned Muslims from many countries from entering the United States. This was supposedly in response to the 2015 San Bernardino terrorist attack and applied to citizens of countries such as Iran, Iraq, Yemen, Syria, and others, which Trump said had a proven history of terrorism. The order was seen by many people as racist, similar to Trump's plan to build a wall on the border of Mexico with the excuse of tackling illegal immigration. One of Donald Trump's most memorable pledges, the border wall was a hot topic for most of his presidency. And while it may have curbed immigration, it caused outrage when it was found that children were being separated from their families and little was being done to reunite them. Over a period of three months in 2018, federal authorities were holding adults in federal jails or deporting them while placing children under government supervision. In June that year, it was revealed that the family separation policy included zero measures for reuniting separated families and by November 2020, the parents of 666 children still had not been found, and the administration was refusing to cover the costs of further reunions. Racism was a major issue for Trump, who has been accused of causing racial tension and dividing the country rather than reuniting it. In 2017, after a white supremacist drove his car into a crowd of people protesting a Unite the Right rally in Virginia, rather than outright condemn the act, the president said that there was hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. It later referred to very fine people on both sides. The death of George Floyd and other black Americans at the hands of police stoked the fires of racial tension within the country, and National Guard troops were deployed in several states in response to a Black Lives Matter protest. Anti-racism protesters were dispersed with tear gas, batons, and rubber bullets. There were riots and incidents of looting in the streets, in response, Trump took to Twitter and wrote that, These thugs are dishonoring the memory of George Floyd. When the looting starts, the shooting starts. This inflammatory behavior on Twitter would come back to bite Trump eventually. A lesser reported fact about Trump is that his administration carried out more federal death sentences in the last year of his presidency than in the 56 previous years of American history combined. Trump's Justice Department resumed federal executions in 2020, Following a 17-year hiatus and his administration carried out 13 federal executions over just seven months, an unprecedented amount. No president in over 120 years had overseen as many federal executions. That said, Trump was likely more concerned by the more than 400,000 deaths in his country attributed to COVID-19, which is almost equal to the number of Americans killed in World War II. Trump commonly referred to the coronavirus as the China virus and repeatedly downplayed the threat of COVID. He openly mocked the use of masks, resisted lockdowns, and ignored scientific experts. In one particularly disastrous conference, Trump suggested that doctors could inject disinfectant into patients or shine a UV light inside the body to get rid of the virus. Obviously, these methods were quickly panned by the medical community. Trump himself caught COVID on October 2, 2020, and spent three days at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center, where he presumably wasn't injected with disinfectant or had a light shown under his skin, before returning to the White House to resume his duties. Donald Trump can lay claim to a number of firsts during his time as President of the United States, though many of them are probably unwanted. For instance, he is the first President ever to be impeached twice. 
The first impeachment came in 2019, when a whistleblower informed Congress that a phone call between Donald Trump and Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. It was alleged that Trump had abused his power by withholding financial aid from Ukraine and baiting Ukraine into announcing that they were investigating Trump's political opponent, Joe Biden. Ultimately, Trump was acquitted by the U.S. Senate and remained as president. However, Trump was impeached for a second time on January 13, 2021, just one week before his term expired. This time, the accusation was incitement of insurrection alleging that Trump had incited the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol in which five people died. Following his loss to Joe Biden in the 2020 presidential election, Trump claimed voter fraud and urged his loyal supporters to never concede and to fight to overturn the result. This led to a mob storming the U.S. Capitol and one Trump supporter being shot dead by police. Again, Trump was acquitted by the U.S. Senate, but only just as the Senate voted 57 to 43 in favor of conviction, 10 votes shy of the two-thirds majority needed to convict. It was an ignominious end to Donald Trump's presidency. His voter conspiracies and his own fake news led to him receiving bans on social media, including his Twitter account being suspended. Joe Biden officially won the 2020 election, receiving 81.3 million votes compared to Trump's 74.2 million and 306 electoral college votes to Trump's 232. Strawberry As for Trump's legacy, he remains the only U.S. president since 1938 to never reach an approval rating of 50% or above in the Gallup poll during his entire time in office. He was certainly a divisive president, and although some people rank him among the worst U.S. presidents of all time, others look to his accomplishments as a positive. For instance, White House spokesman Judd Deere commended Trump's economic achievements, which helped to get the country on the path to financial recovery. He cited how Trump loosened restrictions on auto emissions and oil drilling, while also securing the border with Mexico and rebuilding America's military strength, all while dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. He leaves office having made America safer, stronger, more secure, Deere said in a statement to Reuters. Trump also pushed through massive tax cuts for corporations and the U.S. economy expanded faster than it had under Barack Obama, with unemployment reaching record lows as well. However, COVID-19 halted that progress and led to a spike in unemployment, and the U.S. national debt reaching record highs. In dealing with immigration, many condemned Trump's policies as being too harsh. Less than half of the 1,000-mile-long wall he promised was actually built, much of it just upgrading where barriers already stood. Plus, Mexico never paid for any of it, as Trump had promised. Donald Trump's tough stance towards China has been praised by Republicans and Democrats alike, although his entertaining of autocrats such as Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un was not so successful. He did, however, manage to broker historic accords between Israel and its hostile Arab neighbors. He also reduced U.S. forces in Afghanistan, though failed to live up to his campaign promise of extracting all American soldiers from endless wars. Upon leaving office, Donald Trump retreated to his Mar-a-Lago estate. In February of 2021, he registered a new company called Trump Media and Technology Group, which provides social networking services to customers in the United States. I guess the good thing about being rich is when a company like Twitter suspends you, you can just make your own social media service. In June 2021, Trump held his first rally since the rally that led to the riot at the Capitol building. He has endorsed various Republican candidates, most of whom supported his claims of voter fraud, and some of whom tried to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Despite the fact that he is no longer president, Donald Trump may yet face legal action over his actions while he was in office. In February 2021, a criminal probe was announced into phone calls between Trump and Brad Raffensperger. Allegedly, Trump had asked the Secretary of State to find him enough votes to overturn his election loss to Joe Biden. Trump's business activities are also being looked into and are the subject of both civil and criminal investigations. In July 2021, New York prosecutors charged the Trump Organization with a 15-year scheme to defraud the government. The company's chief financial officer, Alan Weiselberg, was arraigned on grand larceny and tax fraud, among other charges. And in December, Donald Trump was subpoenaed to produce documents related to the business. As of April 2022, he had failed to do so and was held in contempt of court. A New York state judge had imposed a daily fine of $10,000 until Trump complies. 
it looks like the tough times are not yet over for Trell. Although he does seem to be the master when it comes to flirting with controversy and getting away with it. What do you think? If you enjoyed the video, let us know by leaving a like. Tell us in the comments if there's anything you think we missed or who you'd like to see us cover in the future. For more fascinating insights into historical figures like this one, check out the other episodes on our channel. Until next time, this has been Neapolitan, and we'll see you around.